This is Let's Talk About Magnum P.I., the podcast from fans for fans of Magnum P.I. So, hi, we're here with, I hope I don't butcher your name, Sean Mukuahi Garnet. You got it. Yay! Right <laughs> the, ground, the ground is not going to open up and swallow you now. Yay! Because you, you didn't pronounce it right, but you did good, right on. Yay! Oh. So, he plays Flippa, and I'm probably going to butcher it again. No problem. Tuopola? Tuopola on Hawaii Five-0, Magnum P.I. Tupoola, yeah, I think I think it's Tupoola. Sean Tupoola. Yeah. Hey! So thank you for being on the podcast. We're really thank excited you. to have you here. Thank you for having me. Right on. I'm excited. Yay! Us too. So how's life? <laughs> yeah. So where, you, where, where are you guys? You guys in Germany? I am in Germany, and I'm in Canada. <laughs> Canada, right on. Yeah, so we're and like on. You, and you guys are friends. You guys are, are just mutual friends through Magnum PI and all that. We actually met through the podcast. Oh, <laughs> yeah, cool. that's how it all started. Yeah, I, I, I posted a call about hey, I someone want to be on the podcast, the fellow fan, and she was the one to answer. The first yeah. one to answer, and Fair we've enough. been co-hosts ever since. That's cool. Since day one. <laughs> yeah. I, know, I think I think during this lockdown, like everybody ended up being a podcaster or a, a baker, <laughs> a lot of bakers. Yes. Everybody baked bread for some reason. I don't know why. And then uh, uh, carpenters. Everybody <laughs> built a lot of things during the lockdown. So I feel cold out now. <laughs> <laughs> and home exercise people too right oh yeah yeah still feeling called out <laughs> i didn't do that done it all thing. i just watch tv a lot of tv and not netflix hulu i think we can all relate to that i think everyone has a yep. lot of netflix hours under their belt yes and disney plus oh now with disney plus for all the marvel stuff i'm like oh why do we even yeah go why do we go outside or i don't need to go outside it's beautiful outside isn't it Eh, yeah, I guess, you know, it's, it's Hawaii. It has the beach and everything. and everything. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess yeah. I, when I'm young, like, I take it for granted. And then when I get older, I'm like, oh, man, I live in one of the most beautiful places ever in the world. So Yeah, I can so relate thank- to that. I can relate to that. As soon as I was done with school, I fled my home town and I was like okay I'm, I'm back now because it was pretty awesome here for Germany <laughs> I want to go to Germany though I want to check it and Canada too I um, <laughs> I encounter a lot of uh, crazy Canadians at uh, some of my gigs and crazy Germans too so uh, <laughs> yeah I can I just can. awesome awesome yeah. people you know they like to drink beer and have a good time and be loud so I'm like oh I'm, I'm that kind of person we've got an actual brewery in my town here so, yeah, it's like a small brewery with awesome, with really awesome beer. I've been told I don't drink beer, uh-huh. <laughs> except ironically, except for longboard. Oh yeah, well you gotta have a few longboards. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've got like a stash <laughs> outside. A big wave, some big waves. I like big wave. Big wave. Really good beer. Can't really relate to that. I'm more of like a sweet drink person. <laughs> so like, you like lava flows, like pina coladas, and <laughs> yeah, yeah, all that yeah. Um, Malibu Pepper. rum. Oh, Malibu rum. Okay, yeah, yeah. Like that. Okay. I, I I love lava flows. You know, the pina colada with the strawberry and stuff and all that. I I'm usually go for a lava flow. I really don't drink beer that much, but when I'm in the mood, I have a few beers. And all that. Um, uh, usually, maybe it's like Coors Light because you know it's water. You could drink like about thirty of them, and you know, <laughs> yes, you can, you can walk away five. You know, so. yes. I was I was betting my friend from Ca- uh, not from Canada from California once that I can drink so much alcohol, so much more than him, and he took me up on that bet, and I think he regretted that very fast. Oh. <laughs> Germans drink a lot of beer. You get you drink you drink when like you know like you when you're twelve, right? Sixteen or thirteen? Sixteen? Yeah. 
Jesus. <laughs> We're, we, we can drink beer from 16 and then the hard alcohol from 18. Oh, wow. Dang. It's just 18 flat where I am, but then the rest of Canada yeah. is uh, 19. What's oh, 19? Where did it... Most yeah, of America. Canada, except for where I am. Yeah, America sucks. We have to wait till like we're 21. I don't get why yeah. though. I don't know. Like, I aren't you know. are you responsible enough to vote when you're twi- uh, when you're 18? So why have you, do you have to wait until you're 21 to drink alcohol? Let me, let me take that back. I'm not American. I'm Hawaiian first. Yes. And then and then America and yeah, whatever, but. I'm Hawaiian first, so I think Hawaiians we drink whenever we want to drink, when we're responsible. There you go. <laughs> but if there's kids watching, wait until you're old enough. <laughs> yeah, don't drink when you you know because your friends tell you to drink. Just drink when. Especially not if your friends tell you to drink. Like yes. I, I had like my first sip of alcohol when I was 12 because my parents were there and they're like, "You can try this," but like. This is a safe environment. You can try how it yeah. tastes, and that's it. So, that's don't listen to your friends. But if your parents are cool with you taking a little sip, that's Do maybe it. okay-ish. Yeah, it's not like you're gonna take a sip and then go drive the car around the block or something. Oh, no. <laughs> like, no, you're in the kitchen. You're at home. You're in a safe environment. So. Yeah, cool. for sure. Yeah, never drink and drive. That's that's <laughs> scary. Even when you try to do it. Yeah. If at least if you're aware. And if it's a short dip, well, you know what? I'm not going to promote drinking. Right? <laughs> no, no. I was, <laughs> I once, after uh, New Year's Eve, I once got into into a car and I, you know, I was completely done. And I was uh, like, wait, no, 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 no. You, you had alcohol and you're feeling weird. You're getting out of this car and you're calling your parents. <laughs> that was your beer angel talking, right? Yeah, right. You don't need to go. You're yeah. You're not going to go. You're going to stay right here. Gosh darn it. <laughs> but I've heard I'm gonna go to Jack in the Box. <laughs> We're gonna go eat some tacos. <laughs> That's what my beer angel says. <laughs> I can relate to that beer angel. Yep. <laughs> mine, mine usually is all for the food as well. Mine what's just your, popcorn. <laughs> yeah. What's your girl's go to when you're like hammered? Go to food. Oh. Oh, it's been that's like... some pretty good places in Canada. Well, Germany too, but Ca- yeah, Canada probably got some pretty cool places. Oh, same as America, right? They have like you know Burger King. Most of it, yeah. Most of the chains are the same. But I would say anything really like greasy, you know, like fast and greasy, like you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. I'm usually at a convention when I when I drink alcohol. Period. So. There's usually only chocolate around, so chocolate, I guess. Chocolate? Oh, man. Yeah, I usually have to wait until I'm in the trailer. Uh, and then there's this stash of chocolate and sweets that we girls just place there. And yeah, we end up falling for all of the chocolate. Falling for the chocolate. Yeah. Bar, chocolate gods. Right on. My go to is just whatever. <laughs> Whenever there, I mean, in, like, in Ve- I used to live in Vegas, so like it's twenty four. Oh. Isn't that the? Vegas. Isn't that the i the the place that you call the? Oh yeah, the Ninth Island. Yes, the Ninth Island. I yeah, I didn't want to discount. A lot of people from Hawaii move up there, you know, because like, it's expensive to live in Hawaii. Yes. So uh, they go up there for better opportunities. They can buy a house. You know, they can travel. Um, like I said, it's twenty four seven, so like anything is open. So, like, it's crazy. Happen. Yeah, Vegas is Oof. Vegas is another level. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. And you know, if if you're not into the whole twenty four seven thing, and you don't drink and you don't gamble that much, uh, you know, Vegas is cool, I guess. You know, but if you are, then man, you better just be good and stay away from that because it can really mess you up. You know, but. Yeah, I I didn't I never gambled I never really went overboard with the drinking you know I just went there to just live and experience life outside of Hawaii, you know. So, mm. Yeah, traveling is something mm. something we're missing right now. Yeah, <laughs> big time. Have you guys traveled or uh, uh, you know after the lockdown a little bit? 
I'm planning on it for sure. Yeah. We're yeah. still on lockdown. Yeah, hey, we're you, still. You guys still on over there? How? Yeah. Dang. It, where I am, we actually had a curfew up until about uh, two or three weeks ago. We had to be home by eight. Wow. Yeah, yeah. and but like the everything's closed. Well, most things are starting to open now, but a lot of things were closed up until very recently. Like restaurants, you couldn't go to a restaurant inside until, yeah, like yesterday. Yesterday was actually the day that most of the restaurants uh, started welcoming people back. So it's a lot of takeout and yeah. living like that. Yeah, our lockdown started in November last year. So there was a, a tiny bit of, you know, a tiny bit more open during the summer last year. But I, I just went up to the beach in Germany. That was it, to my, my, my aunt's house. And yeah, and we've been in lockdown since November, so six months now. And they're start slowly starting to open stuff back up for vaccinated people only. Getting a little looser, a little, you know, yeah. le lenient on times and all that. Yeah. Same, here, yeah. same here in Hawaii. They're opening up. I mean, I had a gig down in Waikiki at a place called Giovanni Pastrami's. And uh, it was really great to play in front of drunk people again. <laughs> and it was just filled <laughs> with just tourists and drunk people all over the place. They just want me to hear. They, they just want to hear somewhere over the rainbow. I'm like, oh god. Okay. <laughs> that must sure. be the tourist go to sure, um, song. Can, can you play Moana too? Like, uh, <laughs> I don't know it, but whatever. Oh yeah, there we go. Right there. <laughs> nice little dolls. But uh, yeah, it's, it's been booming down in the Waikiki. So tourists yeah. are coming back. They're you know just letting loose. So it's pretty good i mean because hawaii that's like number one like tourism you know we don't have that and there's no striving and that, so pretty thankful yeah it looked like like the entire island just slowed down a lot during lockdown at least yeah. from from during from an outsider's perspective, perspective. yeah yeah that <laughs> yeah. was the first time in a long time like traffic is bad i mean it, it could be compared to like la traffic you know but like uh yeah just driving by and seeing the freeway is just like barren. Just like nobody there. I'm like, wow, this is what it's like when there's no traffic. Thank you, COVID. You know? But now it's just like back to back to the stupid normal, you know? So mm -hmm. yeah. It, it's, could, good. it's good. During COVID, it was the first time I could drive two hundred kilometers per hour on our autobahn because usually it's so packed you can't just take advantage of the fact that we don't have a speed limit there. But oh. I could, for the first time, take advantage of it, and God, I got scared. <laughs> I'm not used cool. to my car being so powerful. Is that like going over 100? Like, 100 miles per hour? Because I don't get the whole kilometers thing. So, I, I think, think there, yeah. um, uh, one mile is 1.6 kilometers. So, if you're going one mile an hour, you're going 1.6 kilometers an hour. So it's like a, it's like a mile and a half, let's say. Oh, all right, all right. Yeah, somewhere around there. So way over a hundred. <laughs> yeah. So you're you're going fast. It's a long straight line where you have no speed limit. You oh. gotta take advantage of it. <laughs> right on. Huh? I gotta go to Germany then. Gotta go check it out. It's usually the easiest to do it at night. I found because then there's less traffic. And less cops? No, no, they they come out at night. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Same here. They all hide in the bushes. They don't put on their blue lights. Then they catch your ass. They're like, oh, man, come on. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, what are, they're not catching you for speeding on the outer bound, at least. Exactly. <laughs> You're That's not. So, um, how about we talk about you on the shows, aka Five O Magnum? How was sure. it? How how was being on set? Um, being on set is pretty cool. I mean, the first time I was on set, I mean, uh, my first scene was with you know my TV cousin Taylor, uh, aka Comic Bona, and then across of me is Taylor Grubbs, 
Alex O'Loughlin and Scott Conn. So I'm like, what the hell am I doing here? <laughs> like, yeah, this is going to happen today. This is going to happen. So, like, it's it's pretty cool. I mean, like, it's, like, just hustle and bustle. Like, you know, like, the camera guys and the grips and whatever makeup, hair and makeup and all that, which, you know, they didn't really do really that much on my hair because I shave my head. <laughs> I'm bald all the time. So, and I, I have no beard here. But, uh, it's a cool feeling. I mean, everybody's super cool. They, you know, talking to the actors on and off. So, yeah. Yeah, you're certainly portraying one of the fan favorites. At least one of the most memorable characters I found. Definitely. My, my dad is, is is doesn't remember anyone. He's like, is, is this that guy? And and Kamikona and Flippa, you always remember this. They're so memorable. My dad remembers a character. Awesome. Yeah, Iconic uh, for sure. Yes. It was a it was pretty it was pretty easy uh, character to portray because you know I'm doing a local guy from Hawaii, so I'm like, hmm, a local guy from Hawaii in real life. <laughs> it's gonna be pretty easy. And I'm playing a cousin. I'm like, mm, I have cousins in my life, so yeah, <laughs> it'll be pretty simple. The only hard thing is to just remember lines, which I always forget, and then uh. Um, the acting part, being stupid or dumb with my faces and all that, that's easy. So it was, it was probably one of the most easiest parts I ever did. Well, the first first acting gig I ever got. So I was I learning heard, every day. Yeah. I heard you improvised a lot. Oh, yeah. I'd love to. Sometimes, like, the only, the only time I want to watch an episode that I'm in, if they kept a dumb thing that I did. Um... Great example, you know, the one episode in 5 where where uh, they're opening up McDon- McDonald's or whatever, the restaurant, and yeah. they come in, does the grand opening thing, and it has the banister. It's like, you know, opening soon. So Comic Con was talking to Alex and Scott, and um, I walk out, and I hit my head on the banister. Uh, <laughs> and that was just really me. It wasn't in the script. I, was just, I saw it. I'm like, it would be pretty fun. Because <laughs> everybody else has lines and all that. Sometimes I have one line, so I gotta do something to like kind of steal the scene. You know, <laughs> so that was like my end to steal the scene. So, and it was yeah. When I watched it, I was like, yeah, better keep yeah. that in. That's <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna tell my grandkids one day. Is like, hey, look, watch this part. Goes, I stole the scene there. I stole the scene there. And, like, when the camera was on me, I could see Alex, like, laughing. And that makes me feel good when I make, I make like, the other actors laugh. You know? Yeah, so. there's got to be some levity somewhere. Yeah. Life yeah. is serious enough, as we've exactly. seen recently. <laughs> got to laugh. Got to be dumb a little bit. Yeah, I'm actually really admiring that about you, that you're able to not only make other people laugh, but not take yourself too seriously. That's that's a quality I admire about people all the time. Yeah, you know, there's a, there's a time to be smart, and then there's a time to be dumb. There's also a time to cry. There's also a time... I think it's in the Bible or something. <laughs> but there's always time to do that kind of crap, you know? Like, just... Yeah, you can't be serious all the time. When it's time to be serious, be serious. And you don't have to be, then don't don't. So that's my that's my philosophy. Yeah, sounds like a good philosophy. That brings me to one other thing that I wanted to ask. Do you have any like funny stories from set? Like did any craziness happen that you can remember off the top of your head? Oh man. There was a few there was a one where uh I think it was like the mud race or whatever they had. They're running the mud race. And then, like, uh, before that, they had to put mud on each other. And they had, like, doused somebody with, I think, one of the directors with mud. And it was just, like, all over him. And, like, Alex and everybody was just cracking up. I mean, <laughs> I remember that. Um, that's so much. I just can't can't think of it right now. Was that but, actual mud? Yeah, they used actual mud. They had to. Because they were running through the <laughs> That had, it was like a mud race or whatever, so it used actual mud. Yeah, because I know, um, I know from people that they sometimes use oil to make people look wet. Oh. So I'm like, <laughs> is that actual mud or did they, you know, 
tamper with it so it's actually more sanitary? Prop mud. Like, oh. And then after that, they just they had like a little makeshift shower or whatever for them, for the <laughs> actors. So they just took a shower and went home. So um, that's one thing I remember. Um, man, there's so much. Oh, I, like, I really can't remember off the top of my head. But, uh, you know, just little jokes here and there said between the actors, you know. It was, it was a lively bunch, you know. Sounds so, like fun. Yeah. Yeah, having fun. You gotta have fun when you're there for like 18 hours, you know. I mean, you're, sometimes you bring your guitar or bring your iPad, you can watch movies or whatever, but you gotta kill time. So, what better, Crazy cat videos yeah, sometimes. What better way to do <laughs> than like, you know, just banter between each other and just talk about stuff and all that, so. Good thing that you then get along with people. I would hate it if, if, you know, there's people that you don't get along with and it's just tense all the time. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's there's a few actors that um, probably would have would have got a, a Sean Garnett forearm to the head because, um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> they probably deserve it. <laughs> uh, but other than that, I was like, well, they're getting paid more than me, so I should just be quiet. You know, but all in all, like everybody was cool. I really don't have anything bad to say about it. Anybody, everybody was a total professional, and they did the job, and everybody just so cool. So I gotta ask: any chance we'll see you in season four of Magnum PI? I would, I would love to be in the next season. Uh, I was in the last season a couple times, and uh, yeah, I mean, if they use Flippa again, I'm always. Uh, I'm always there. Ready I mean, I, I can say from a fan perspective, I, I really love it when Flippa is there and when Comic Con yeah. is there. Me too. Because yeah. for me, they're like not only the funny characters, but they show a lot of heart and they're like a connection to the community that the other characters don't seem to have. Which I, you know, I felt like I especially saw when Comic Con, who's usually all about, you know, the money goes yeah. out and and provides food for the firefighters during the wildfire and stuff like i really love these characters yeah i mean i think it's cool for like both uh magna fans and more for 50 fans because they missed the show it's yes. been off for a couple mm-hmm. of years i guess so when they see you know their their old friends come on state uh, stage or on camera they're like oh there they are you yeah know, like, even when you watch like another another TV show, uh, I don't know, like Frasier or or Cheers or something, you know, you see that one character. Oh yeah, I remember him. You know, like you haven't seen for a long time. Like that's yeah. just the nostalgic factor. You know, even with Marvel movies these days. I oh mean, yes, especially with Marvel movies. Yeah, sometimes you're watching like even like WandaVision, and like you want to say, oh, that's the kind, that's the guy. You know what I mean? <laughs> I remember him from that. You know, like so it's. Yeah, I think that's why why they do that. And, uh, brings a smile. Yeah, my my best friend's a huge Loki fan, so like Loki's come on last week, so that that's been such a joy. Dude, like I'm so thankful about these series, you know, like uh, and these movies too. Like we're, I'm just thankful I'm alive to see like the coolest. Marvel movies ever because like back in the well, I I was born in eighty two so I'm pretty old and like seeing nah. <laughs> um, don't say you're old you're barely <laughs> older than me not that much not that much but like the Marvel movies that came out you know back in the day I was like it's pretty yeah. bad but now like with the CGI and everything it's like oh dude you can make like coolest movies ever yes and and that universe is really something else so <laughs> if they approached you with a role for marvel you'd take it right <laughs> heartbeat even if it was just flip up <laughs> to, be, to be in the marvel universe <laughs> that would be the coolest cameo ever and like you know loki or something say like, aren't you in hawaii if I that? yeah yeah that, that i just one word in in marvel just yeah <laughs> that's, all, that's all I need and I, I can assure you that the fans would celebrate that oh yeah for sure by the way uh, is that a w- WWE cup 
Yes, it is. It's a. I found it at Walmart for a dollar. <laughs> yeah, it has the legends as Roddy Piper, Sergeant Slaughter. Yes, Jake the Snake Roberts. <laughs> you guys, do you, uh, do you girls watch wrestling? I do. I actually don't. <laughs> Not at the moment. Like uh, last time I watched wrestling was live. Ooh. Over here, I don't remember where it was, but I distinctly remember Randy Orton going on onto the barricade in front of me and basically, yeah, his Putting nether his, uh, region in my face. Nice! He's RKO's, right in, right in your... Uh, basically, back. yes! Awesome. It smelled like baby oil, probably, huh? I did not smell. I was too shocked <laughs> to even move. So he was just like... like yeah. That. That's That's wonderful. And a memorable, <laughs> memorable <laughs> moment you'll never forget. Certainly, certainly. That's awesome. Very good. Oh jeez. <laughs> and I'm just over here, super Canadian, you know, watching hockey. <laughs> <laughs> Hockey's awesome, though. <laughs> it's a super Canadian. <laughs> super Canadian. Oh man. Uh. Well, where in Canada do you, do you live? Like uh, I'm in Montreal. Pro one province, right? Provinces. Province, yeah, Quebec. Yes. Quebec. Yeah. Isn't Bret Hart from there? Do you know who Bret Hart is? Bret Hart. Bret the Hitman Hart. Uh, oh, she does. <laughs> she doesn't know who Bret Hart is. I noticed. She's Canadian. I don't. <laughs> but oh. she knows one wrestler or former wrestler that she I know. Bret. But you know Wayne Gretzky, though, right? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> everybody knows Mario Lemieux. Everybody knows Super Mario. Everybody knows. Yeah, no, my uh, my team's actually uh, still in the Stanley Cup like playoffs. Really? So, yeah. Right. Yeah. Montreal, we're taking on uh, we're taking on Vegas right now. Speaking, of going back to our Vegas conversation. So, <laughs> wow, I mean, we haven't won okay. we haven't won the cup since '93, but you know. We were, you know, Montrealers are partying in the streets going, okay, we're going to win this time. And I'm sitting there, no, we're probably gonna not. Win, we're going to freaking win there. I don't care. We're going to get drunk either way. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Like, and we know we win one game and like there's like rioting in the streets because we win. It's like, imagine if we won, if we actually won the cup, the city would burn oh. down. I'm telling you, <laughs> there would be no more city. That's the one thing cool, not the riots and all that, but the one thing cool about like having a home team and your home team wins. And that just, you know, talk about like bringing the city or, or whatever together, you know. I feel that way. I'm a Cubs fan. I like the I like the Cubs. And when the Cubs won a World Series, it was just like, wow. You know, like years and years of just like not winning. <laughs> and then you win one and you're just like, wow, that's freaking awesome. Yeah, so, sports yeah. brings people so I'm, together. I'm praying for the for you guys to win, bring home that stuck cup. The, the cup. Stanley Cup. We got to bring it home for Canada. The only Canadian team left in. <laughs> well, I'll pour some beer in it and drink from the cup. Yeah, it's been known to happen. I mean, while people go crazy over football over here. Oh yeah, I really don't watch football. Yeah, it's it's a European Championship, so. Oh, yeah. soccer. That that football. <laughs> I yes. Was say American football or soccer? My bad. I'm sorry. Yeah, um, that that football, the one that you play ninety percent of the time with your foot, unlike um, American yeah, I, football. I'm actually a Browns fan for some reason. Uh, for American football, not <laughs> soccer. Um, and everybody teases me why. He was like, "Well, I'm brown. I'm Hawaiian. I'm the Hawaiian. I'm brown, so I picked the Browns. So Cleveland Browns is my team." I guess. So uh, Everybody you know, has what's their point? It would be it would be stupid of me to ask what your football team is. Not American, but but it, it is from Germany, right? Scotland. The German I've bet I bet on Scotland this year. <gasps> Scotland. Yes, uh, we have like we have like we call it the cake league. So uh, everybody wanted to bet money on it, and I was like, nah. Um, if if I'm betting. I'm betting something that everybody gets something out of. So I'm like, if my team loses, I'm bringing cake. And and it ended up with being a lot of people being like, I'm betting on this team. So we're basically nice. having cake every day for the next cake. month. Well, well, that's not 
not a bad thing. So yeah, I was like, I'm I'm going for Scotland to ensure that they actually, that I actually get to make my cake. What kind <laughs> so of I cake? wanted, to, I wanted to try Hawaiian chantilly cake. I got like, oh nice, yeah, I got like a, a really good recipe, like there from that book, or oh. from the other book. I've got like two, uh, two books. So I'm like, I want to try this. So yeah. I'm making sure I lose. Yeah, you get when you come to Hawaii. Have you girls been to Hawaii? It's in the works. <laughs> it's in the works. I, I originally wanted to come last year, and well, we all know what happened last year. Yeah, some dumb whatever thing. Yeah, yeah. So, so like we're planning to come this year. Awesome. Awesome. What if you go? Uh, there's a place called Liliha Bakery. They make good chantilly cake. Very good. So you got to go check it out. And the Cocoa Puffs. Or something. Yeah. It's yeah. a staple on the Hawaii 5 0. You know, yeah, yeah, that and malasadas. I was gonna say I want to try a malasada. Oh, no malasada! <laughs> and I heard Leonard's is like that's the, the that's place the to, go. to go. That's the place to go. You gotta go to Leonard's. You gotta get the, bo- the pink box. The yes. Pink box, open it up, and it's like, oh. and, and actually, when you open it up, you can hear the malasada sing. It's like. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I'm following them. I'm when so you eat it, yeah. <laughs> when you eat one, they go no, no, no. <laughs> but I have to ask because I'm. I want to know what's the difference between like a traditional donut and a malasada. I'm genuinely curious. What is the like? Malasada is like okay, it's so like my fist, right? Uh, and then a donut, you know, as a whole. <laughs> That's basically it. That's I mean, different. yeah. I mean. It's not really a difference. I mean, I think maybe it's the way they make it, you know? Like, it just, it's more softer, the malasada. Um, you know, you could put different kinds of toppings, like sugar, cinnamon. You could put halpia, like fillings inside there. Uh, yeah, so compared to a donut, uh, there's little similarities, but not really that much different. I mean, they're both terrific. <laughs> but one is, like, just... It doesn't have a hole in it, which is the model side. But it. But Definitely you, on my you, bucket you, list to try. You, yeah. You go yeah. To bring your ass to Hawaii and try it. Definitely. What else do you recommend for us to try in Hawaii? <laughs> There's a lot of food. <laughs> I don't know about that. that. Well, since, you know, I'm Flippa and I'm a, a leader of Kamikona Shrimp Truck. Um, <laughs> well, I'm the second leader. Um, let me see. You can go to Rainbow Drive In. It's been there since, and I was a little, I was a little kid. Uh, it's like plate lunches. You can have loco moco, uh, shave ice over there, all kind of foods, burgers, and whatnot. Uh, yeah, it's a also a Hawaiian staple. Um, and you can get Hawaiian food. You know, Lao Lao, Kalu Pig. A uh, favorite place of mine is Highway Inn. You can get so much good food over there. Helena's, which is another good Hawaiian uh, food restaurant. Check it out. Um, I think maybe they did a few cameos in 5.0. I think so. I think Helena's and Highway Inn. I may be mistaken. But yeah. But yeah. It, anywhere you go, you can you can find good food. That's actually yeah. one thing that I really loved about 5.0 is the cameos of local places. Yeah. Because like, there's so many local places that, that look so cool. Yeah. And they're highlighting it to the world. Like, look at Hawaii. Hawaii's awesome. I mean, there's a, in Hilton Hawaiian Village at Tropics, there's a, uh, the, the, the drink list has a list of 5 O characters. So it's like uh, the Lou Grover, the Lou Grover Palmer or whatever. They have like a Hawaii 5 O margarita or like the Dano drink. So it's all like characters of 5 O. <laughs> It has, you know, they just make drinks out of their names. So I'm waiting for a flip a drink. Yes. Yeah, worth the credit. Flip a, flip a white Russian or something. So, <laughs> I don't know. Yes. Why not utilize yeah. Flippa's name and then his popularity? Yeah. I feel is definitely there. I feel like a lot of fans will probably be very, very happy to see this episode. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so hi everybody. <laughs> so you're doing a 5-0 tour right yes i am uh we've been doing it 
before the lockdown for a few months, which was going really good. And then when COVID hit, it just, you know, it sucked. But uh, it's called Lunch at McGarrett's. You can go to lunchatmcgarrett's.com and book a tour. You go to the Bayer Estate, which is McGarrett's house, and uh, check out where they sit down with the two seats and all that. And the beach is right over there. It's really cool, beautiful. You get to have a sandwich, and you sit down with me, um, talk about stuff that happens on the show, talk about um, how long it takes to film an episode of Five O. And, uh, you know, maybe I'll tell you guys some stories. So, um, yeah, we've been doing it. I think this is the second week. Tomorrow I have another tour. I usually do it on Monday, Tuesdays. And it's all COVID, you know, cool. And, uh, you know, everybody's social distance. And, um, yeah, it's really fun. Really fun. Sounds awesome. Definitely yeah. something to add to our list, right, Liz? Yeah, we're going. To, we're definitely going. <laughs> sure. And I'll, I'll give you a discount code. And then, uh, you know, you guys can get uh, some your tour discounted. So, save some money. <laughs> I think if you're going to why money can't really be the issue, because that's <laughs> expensive. I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. like, basically blowing through my savings, but it's probably worth it. Oh, yeah. yeah very <laughs> worth it. Very worth it. But, uh, yeah, it's, it is expensive. Sometimes I want to sell the child, sell my boy, but I can't. <laughs> Because <laughs> I want to see him grow up. Sometimes I want to sell him just to get another Xbox One. But I don't know. My wife would be pretty mad about that. But I, I guess I have to keep him. Mm. Like, <laughs> the level. Yeah, I know. I know. It's like, <laughs> should I get the new WWE 2K game or sell my son? I don't know. Yeah, but isn't it more fun one day to play the game with him? And and completely win, destroy him in the oh, game. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, I got the uh, old, I got the old school and uh, Super Nintendo, you know, the, the mini one. Yeah. And I told him, oh boy, you want to play Mario Kart? <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. Oh man, what today? He's like, I don't want to play. Like, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Daddy knows what he's doing. But you know, he's pretty cool. He plays like all the old school games I used to play. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, that. I can't wait to get my uh, the real Nintendo and show them all the games that's not on the mini Nintendo thing. So. How old is he right now? He's eight. Oh, all day long. yeah. That's 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 the time where that's discovered slowly. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're waiting for God to uh, give him his uh, hearing because he doesn't apparently he doesn't listen. <laughs> so yeah. I'm waiting for God to give him the hearing. So yeah. He does this. Yeah. It's like a saying here in Germany. Usually it's with brains, but you can uh, apply everything. Uh, yeah. Lord, please toss brains or like hearing from the heavens. Oh, shit, you missed. <laughs> <laughs> right now. One time, uh, uh, Alex and I we were talking about, you know, we, we always talk about, like, uh, guitars and music and and all that. And he, he said, like, he just never had time to uh, play his guitar. Like, he has to change the strings and everything. It's all rusty and all that. I was like, dude, you got to play it. But, like, in my mind, I'm like, he's in every episode. And his days are, like, longer than everybody else, you know. So I get why he doesn't get have time to play so that's why I bring my guitar and, like, you know, I play it on, on set. But we were talking about kids. And, and so I, I think one time he was, like, he laid down in bed and he was talking to his wife. And he was like, man, why, why, am I, why is my kid an a-hole sometimes? <laughs> uh, and I was like, dude, I say the same thing to my wife. I was like, why is he such an asshole? Why? I don't know why. He, why is he? Why? I was like, I wasn't like that when I was a kid. So I, like, <laughs> uh, you know, I take that back. I take that back. I was a little bit, but I was a cute kid. And yeah. We all... It was kind of similarity between me and him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so 
we're talking about like productions in Hawaii and stuff. Any yeah. chance we'll see Flippa in the new NCIS Hawaii? Ooh, um, at, at this point, in uh, if you want to say a career, um, I'm open to anything <laughs> at this point. You know, like uh, now that things are opening up and I'm playing gigs mostly on the weekends. You know, playing you know music gigs here and there. Um, and then you know Magnum's coming back. Uh, you know, at this point, I'll do anything. You know, it would be cool to, like, pop in and help out the NCIS team, you know, with some shrimp or something. I don't know. But, um, yeah, I would love to. I could see it, honestly. I could yeah. see them coming up to the shrimp truck to have, like, a meeting, like, you know, 5 used to and kind of also mm-hmm. bring that, like, 5 element back in a way it's, without bringing back 5 kind of Yeah, to tie everything yeah. together. Even if it's like a different character, you know, like if they let me keep the beard, you know, like because with the beard I look totally different. Um, of course, if I'm wearing this, then that's a dead giveaway. I mean, uh, I did, I did a movie one time, and I didn't wear. Oh no, no, I did a cameo on the the new Doogie Howser. It was a new Doogie Howser Disney or series Disney Plus, right? Called uh, Doogie Kamealoha. And I didn't want to wear this because when they see this, it's Flippa all the way. You know, fans would be like, oh, this is the same necklace. Oh, he must be just playing Flippa and Doogie Howser. <laughs> so I didn't wear it. But um, I had my beard. I looked like a just kind of a different person. But uh, yeah, that's the one thing about this is like if I ever had like a movie opportunity and I never had a beard. It just be oh, it's just Flippa in a Marvel movie. That's what it is. <laughs> That's it. Is. Oh, oh, I mean, God. he would totally work in a Marvel movie. Yeah. They 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 break the fourth wall all the time. So <laughs> bring Flippa to Marvel. My powers would be just cooking up good garlic shrimp, serving it to Thor or something. Like there you go, bro. Thank you so much. <laughs> That's it. That's the whole <laughs> scene. Scene. Give me my money so I can get an Xbox One. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you very much approve of that. <laughs> Speaking of Flippa, did you have any influence on, on you know, apart from your improvisation on, on how he was written? Which one? What was that? Uh, did you have any influence on how he was written or, or what kind of scenes oh. he could do or, you know, the relationship to Kamakona? No, not really. I mean, if, if they needed something different, um, they would tell me, but other than that, it was just like, learn your lines and have at it, you know? Sometimes and sometimes I'll, steal the scene? Yeah, I, that's in my mind, because like, like I said, like I have very minimal uh, lines. No lines, maybe sometimes, and I have to like use my fa- facial expressions, you know? So, if that's all I gotta do, then that's what I'm gonna do, but like, I gotta do something, right? So, um, yeah, they never really told me to do anything. I just did it on my own and I like, just tried to s- steal a scene every single time. And it worked. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> I could make a, like, one it scene the- in each show, like Magnum and 5 where you definitely stole the scene. The one that I'm thinking of in 5 is when uh, it's you and Max and Kamakona are lying on the beach. And it turns out that it's the resort. Yeah. And you guys are just that I love that scene and you know, you're playing the ukulele. I think it's ukulele. Yeah. 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 And I that's one of my favorite scenes, like in that whole like era that of Fire. That, that and one I just is it. my favorite episode I ever did. Because, you know, I had a lot of lines I had to memorize. Um my day started five in the morning and I went home like five or six at night because it was in the morning where we got stranded and the night you know because of the resort and everything but yeah that was the first time i ever felt like oh man right on i'm actually doing a big scene a big episode you know so i was super grateful i'm doing that and like that was one of my favorite favorite ones but like when i watch it it's like oh man not to be all like is it narcissistic to laugh at yourself or is not, at right word? not at all. Not at all. Is the right word? Right. Uh, it's the right word, but it's the right word. But, but uh, I'm watching. I'm like, dude, that's freaking hilarious. Like my like the faces, and when I'm lying down on the ground, I'm looking at the 
<laughs> the fireworks shit. I was like, oh, man, it's three dummies over there. <laughs> it's like on the beach. I was like, oh. And I love the ID scene in the season three premiere of Magnum P.I. also. Oh, yeah. yeah. When they call you in as like the consulting expert. Or they call Kevin I think, and then you come as yeah. a replacement, yeah. Yeah, um, actually, that that was um, supposed to be, I think Taylor was supposed to do the scene, but he couldn't, so they asked me to, to do it. was like a last-minute kind of thing. I think casting called me, and they're like, can you do a COVID test right now? I'm like, why? <laughs> what do you know? Why, why, why do I take COVID? I said, oh, you might have to do a scene tomorrow. Like, that's short notice <laughs> oh like tomorrow like the next day after today tomorrow so I was like, okay so i went home and yeah i had to do the scene so. and that must have been like early days of the whole like covid precautions and oh, everything yeah. which must change a lot on set yeah. like what was that difference like i can only imagine it must be you totally know, just, different you just uh have to just kind of be social distance and just use your mask you have to have a you know a correct mask, I guess, because I had I had used a mask that wasn't really approved for the uh, COVID cops, I guess. <laughs> and, uh, and then I'm sorry, can you use this mask? Sir? Oh man, yeah, no work. That was about it. You know, everybody was safe. Everybody's tested. Um, if I'm working, let's say like on a Friday, the, the week before, I have to take a test three times a week. So last week, I will take three, and then the week of, I have to take two before I shoot, and then I have to take another one during when I shoot. So that's like six. Wow. Six COVID. Six that's... up the nose. <laughs> and, um, everybody's wow. different. Everybody, every doctor's different. One of them, I almost sweared at him, because he went up, and he went like this, like, and we took oh, it out. I was like, so Jesus. I was like, Jesus! And he's like, see you, brother. I was like, <laughs> almost choke slam on you. Oh, they're Ooh. uncomfortable. They're really yeah, uncomfortable. It all depends. It all depends on which nurse it is. Was it, like, scary being on set at the beginning? I, I mean, I'm assuming people got used to it over, but... No, no. I, I mean, I've, I've been out a few times. Not that much, but, like, it wasn't really scary, you know. Because I knew that everybody was safe, everybody was tested. Like, the whole, like everybody needs to be tested. So, in my mind, I'm like, man, it's it's super safe. Which yeah, they that... have to be, because if they're working, they have to, you know. Yeah, that to... industry seems to be one of the industries that really has yeah. got the safety part down, unlike yeah. others. So, yeah. I, was, I was scared when COVID first happened and i was still doing the morning show i i was a re- uh, worked in the radio so me driving into town going inside the studio with the mics and everything my wife was like okay i want you to put gloves on i want you to put two pairs of uh, socks two pairs of pants long pants i don't know why she didn't really say that but like she, she's like gloves <laughs> mask wear everything so i'm just like this <laughs> Oh, one five nine. This is Sean Gurn. And hey, how you guys doing? So I'm like, just all hazmatted out. <laughs> but that, I was a little bit kind of this because the disease was just starting, and the whole COVID thing was pretty scary. But yeah, I got laid off at the job, so I didn't have to go in anyway. So I was like, yes. <laughs> where's where's we gonna pay it anyway? So yep. Yeah. This- Okay, so completely different. What's the funniest fan encounter you ever had? Jeez, that's the one thing cool about being on a TV show. Like people just like giving you like the, the side eye. <laughs> <laughs> I had one where after a gig, I was going in the parking garage and I was going in the elevator. And this girl was just like, just like. Oh my God. And I, I looked at her and I was just like, I am. <laughs> just to say, I am. Just to break the ice. <laughs> and, she's like, uh, and she got her, she got out her phone. She's like, wait, hold on, stay right here. Stay right here. She started <laughs> Googling me. 
and like comparing, just like <laughs> ta look tattoo. Yep, that that's you. That's you. Yeah. <laughs> I need a picture right now. And like, yeah. I actually um, have such a similar story. Uh, at a convention, yeah. you have to take. There's like four elevators you can take, and that's only four elevators for the entire hotel. <laughs> And I'm, I'm in the hotel where the actors stay. <laughs> and I went into an elevator and there was this girl staring at one of the actors like, oh. I'm just like, hey, Ian. It's, like, it's so awkward to stand there and be like, oh. it's just a guy. Just say hi. Just be nice. Yeah. Exactly. But it, it, it's a weird thing. Like when you've seen them on TV and all of a sudden they're like right there next to you. <laughs> like whenever we have, like, I, I was like that you know my first episode but then after a while i was like is this going to be my job i can't be weird you know it's just seeing people you know and when we have the like, guests guess uh you know appearances like you know like carol burnett uh one of them though that i keep in touch with ziggy marley like that's super cool man so like it's probably weird for fans you know like when they see them they're like Oh my god, it's Phil Collins. <laughs> yeah. I love you. I love you in the air tonight. You know, like, you just got to get used to it, you know. I mean, I'm not as popular as Alex or Scott, but I do get the occasional, hey, you're, 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 you're on the shrimp truck, right? You're on the shrimp truck, guys? You are, huh? Can you sign my leg? You know, that kind of <laughs> Can you sign my baby's head? Did that happen? Yeah. No, I didn't. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah, this is, that would be crazy. That would be a crazy yeah, one. For yeah, sure. that would be a crazy one. The, like, the, the, cool, the coolest thing is like when I meet fans and they're just overly joyed to just meet you. Because they can be telling they tell me like stories like, dude, like, watching your show and watching you and Comic Con and all that, you guys really like just made me happy. And all that. I was going through a rough time. I was like, really? Why five O does that? You know, you don't you don't want to watch Grey Grey's Anatomy or, oh, or Grey's you know, Anatomy is stressful. Yeah. Okay. Too stressful. I've never watched it, so I really I really don't know. But like Oh yeah, so that that's the cool thing about about being on a show is that you can really uplift somebody's spirits. Mm -hmm. There's a handful of people on Instagram who uh, message me and you know like i do my best to answer as much as i can again i'm not as popular as the other ones so i have time to go and you know answer a lot of people but like yeah like your words and you know their encouragement can really help out somebody you know so yeah it, it doesn't hurt to put a smile on somebody's face or try your best because it's cool. It's cool to make somebody happy. I think I, I don't know a single fan who doesn't love you, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. They're, they're probably, they're probably a not human. They're probably a robot or something. It happens. I can't disagree. <laughs> There's a lot of people that are <laughs> secretly robots. Uh, to go with Loki, what happens if, we, if we're a robot and we don't know it? Well, you know, if we are, then it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just keep on living my life, I guess. <laughs> oh, I have a baby. Can can robots have babies, though? Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Maybe you're, like, a really evolved cyborg that can have babies. babies. <laughs> Wouldn't that be the perfect model story? Probably. I know maybe <laughs> my, wife, my wife is not a robot because she had the baby. But, Who says uh, the robots can't have babies? I'm trying to think Futurama, that Bender. Bender had a baby in Futurama, didn't he? At one point? Pizza? I think. <laughs> you want Futurama? Yeah. Yes. Oh, I love you girls. Uh, of course. My, my favorite one is the Slurm Factory. Oh, yeah. Uh, Fry. Fry wins the trip to the Slurm Factory. <laughs> it's so, and they're like bringing in the Willy Wonka. Wonka do. Shut the hell up! <laughs> yeah, that's and I, I love that. Madison, like, <laughs> I brought the prisoners over here. You managed to speak. 
<laughs> My favorite is a uh, I'm born for a scuttle. <laughs> oh, yeah. Edna, Edna, I came here. Ah. Sniper. Oh, it takes like half Sniper. a second for me to to mentally translate it because I only watch Futurama in German. <laughs> for real? Oh man, it must be funnier in Germany. In German. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's it's so weird sometimes to watch stuff in German. I Simpsons and Futurama is, is like one of the two shows I actually only watch in German for some reason. Uh-huh. But like, there's other shows where I'm like, I like. I I can feel there's a joke there. I want to see it in English because I want I want that joke. I want to laugh, please. You have to see the original. Yeah, yeah. And there's like the, the weird the weird voices for people. Like sometimes it's it's like um to go with five O and, and Magnum PI. Um it, I can never get over the fact that Kono and Juliet Higgins are the same voice. Yeah. Because yeah, Grace crazy. Park and Perdita Weeks are so different. <laughs> <laughs> this is the, probably one of them, you know, she had time, so Let's use them, except they're in the same universe, and it, kind of people who watched Five O will notice. Hey, she sounds suspiciously like Kono. Yeah, they probably they probably want her to sound like her anyway. So the, the nostalgic factor. But yeah, I can see why. <laughs> I can see how you can see how they sound, you know, the same. Yeah, that's why I switched to English most of the time. Grace is from Canada, if you if you were. Yeah, she's from Vancouver. Yeah. yeah. I hugged her. <laughs> That's what my, actually one of my questions. I was like, what is it like work, like, what is it like working with like Alex and Scott and Grace and also like Perita and Jay and all of them? Man, man like, like I said, they're total professionals and uh, yeah, they, they try to have fun on set. And um, one thing I try to do is remember my lines because they have to remember more lines than me. So I don't want to make them mad if I forget my lines. Because, like, sometimes, I, you know, an actor will look at me and like, it's just one line. I'm like, I know. Shut up. I got it. <laughs> so I don't want to say that in my brain when I say it, but I don't say it on my mind. But, uh, yeah, Jay's, Jay's super cool. Perdita's super awesome. Zach, he talks to me um, on Instagram off and on. Even Stephen Hill. So, um, yeah. I think that uh, puts a little extra notch in my book when some of the actors actually talk to me. You know, they like oh. my stupid stuff on Instagram. So, like, as fans, you're like, yes! You know? We know the feeling. <laughs> yes, little we do. Victories, little victories in your head. You're like, yes! Phil Collins liked my post. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can totally relate to that. <laughs> Definitely. And what was it like making the transition from Five O to Magnum? Was it seamless because they're the same universe, or is it? It's it's the same. You know, it's the same production, same people that I've seen. You know, on Five O and all that. It's just you know different cast. Um, nothing really really changed. You know, um, yeah, it's it was just like being on Five O. You know, so nothing really changed. Yeah, not not even my wardrobe. <laughs> I had the same. <laughs> wardrobe whatever so like yeah nothing really changed same aloha you know oh aloha from that. there over there so yeah changed. i love awesome. that mm-hmm. so coming to you personal um what's something you always wanted to do or a place that you always wanted to go to oh i really wanted to go to japan for some reason japan would be cool I've but, been. It's really awesome. Yeah. Um, I think uh, I would be uh, maybe feared and uh, praised because, one, I have tattoos. And maybe they think I'm Yakuza. Or I'm big because, you know, sumo. <laughs> so, yeah. But uh, I want to go to Japan and check it out. Germany. I've always wanted to go to Germany, Canada, you know. Um, yeah. I've always wanted to do, and I told my wife, I always wanted to get an RV and just just travel for a year. Bring my oh, guitar, that sounds system, lovely. my PA, 
And I, I've, d- I've done this post on my Instagram one time. I was like, hey, if there's any, would 5 fans or, or Magnum fans book me for backyard barbecue parties and I'll play at your house for like a fee or something? And then I would just go around the mainland, you know, maybe travel up to Canada too, in Alaska, you know, where, wherever, wherever it is. Just spend the year just playing gigs, seeing every state that I can. And to me, that would be freaking awesome to do. Um, I've never been outside the United States. I'll, probably the first place I want to go to is like Japan or England. I would love to go to England. I have a lot of friends, a few friends over there. So, I mean, if you if you want to take an RV and go from Germany to England through France, that's also possible. That, yes. That is European very, tour. Uh, yeah. Like European vacation, like Chevy Chase. Oh, yes. I would love that. I would love to do that anywhere. Get an RV or whatever, like a bus. I don't care. Just, just to travel and see people and play different places and... You know, see how people respond to summer over the rainbow in like, <laughs> different countries, you know? You know? I think it's probably unanimously loved. Yeah. I would just say, like, oh my god. <laughs> say it, say it. <laughs> it's the summer over the rainbow guy. So, yeah, like, that's probably, to answer your question, anywhere. Anywhere would be cool. I mean, that's I've cool. lived in Hawaii my whole life. I mean, I've seen practically the whole island chain. Not to say that Hawaii is boring to me, but like, you know, I like to go other places to check it out. Yeah, it's always the place that you're living that feels yeah. boring, and then you yeah. you kind of got to get away to appreciate what you have. I feel. Yeah. yeah. Of course, that, that's why I'm to Vegas. You know, like, uh, you know, they do call it the Ninth Island, and there's a lot of local people up there. I had my uncles who worked up there, my some cousins, but uh, yeah, it was good. I mean. In Vegas, you can go to California if you want to go to Disneyland, or you can go to Grand Canyon, Arizona, go up to Seattle, uh, go to uh, Astoria, Oregon to see the Goonies, you know? <laughs> so you can go anywhere, anywhere that you want to go. You can just travel. Man, just get in a car, whatever. That's what my wife and I did. Like, If I had a gig in like Chandler, Arizona, I was like, hey, you want to come with me? And after that, we go to the Grand Canyon, you know? So, like, yeah. Endless possibilities of fun. Sounds awesome. Mm-hmm. That's a great plan. Yeah. Where would you uh, girls like to go? Other than Hawaii. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess for me, it would be Europe because I haven't been in a couple years. Uh, and I have family there up in England, like we were talking about. So maybe there. Um, where else? I also like, uh, you know, like New York City, because not too far from where I am, and LA, and like those are some places that I've been that I would definitely go again. But bucket list, I think since I was like 10. You know, is Hawaii. I used to wear, I used to get made fun of actually. I used to have a pink shirt and it's actually I had two one that said Aloha and then one that said Hawaii. And I used to wear them like any chance that I got. Like I went to a, I went to an all girls private school. So I had like, you know, the kilt and the little tie and whatever. And anytime that we had a free dress day, I would wear that shirt. <laughs> and I had a box under my bed that I had all these plans. To, like to go to Hawaii, I was like ten, you know. Oh. I was I started watching Lost at ten, and I was like, you know, this is where I'm gonna go, and this is like I had all the places where they filmed it, you know. And like, <laughs> this is the plan, and still to this day, when I say I want to go to Hawaii, people who've known me since then are like, seriously, you're still on that? I'm like, of course, <laughs> I'm like let's go. Maybe I should have recalled my question and just say, what's your what would the, what would be your favorite place to go to? And probably both of you probably would say Hawaii. <laughs> yeah. yeah. For oh, me, Hawaii is, it, is, it is an incredible place. Yes. For me, it would be New Zealand, Australia, and then California, actually. Cool. I want to see the places where they filmed The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings, because I'm a nerd. Mm. Let me carry the load. Yeah, I would love to go to uh, New Zealand. That would be pretty cool. Yeah. 
So I think, how about we wrap this up? It was really sure. nice to have you. Thank you yeah. for doing this. Yeah, thank you. Any, anytime, anytime, you know, to talk about, you know, what I do and all that. And uh, anytime you guys, you girls want to talk again, let me know. For sure, for sure. I'll take you up on that, for sure. We will, we will. So thank you for being here and we'll see you next time. Bye, girls. <laughs>